Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Thanks for joining me today. Finally back from vacation. I didn't get, I thought I'd get more sun, but I guess when I tan, I'll burn, but then I like, I tan like it's gone. The burn's gone and I just tan a little bit. So I didn't get as much sun as I thought I was going to get. Everybody else got burnt. <laughs> Kathy is a lobster because she, you can just put her in the sun for five minutes and she becomes a lobster. But vacation was amazing. Uh, we had a great time and the kids enjoyed swimming in Mexico and it was really cool. I'm glad I got to do it. And uh, I'm glad to be back though. I'm very happy to be back. And man, I'm gone for a week and look what happens. Holy shnikes, there's a lot of videos to cover. Today's video, we're covering Sakona Jolie, uh, Jonathan specifically just going to the depths of just places that parents should not be going with their kids. Uh, identity issues and things are a big hot topic right now, so gonna be very careful with this video. This is a very big problem, and obviously the root of it all is exploitation of children, and that's it. So, let's do it. Wait. That's So it's been a hot minute since I've covered the, the Jolies, Jonathan and what's her face. And it's it's actually been a hot minute since he's been on YouTube. So uh, he took a little time off because he's struggling with his identity issues. Uh, he took time off to write a book and they, they just got released and I'm not going to read it. So too bad. But I don't think the book did as successfully as he thought. So I guess they're coming back to YouTube to get the book more sales and things like that. They're running out of money. If you needed proof that these people need to exploit their children to make money, this family is one of the most obvious cases to look at. Jonathan Jolie started um, using his son, who is I think now his daughter, um, identity issues to bring viewers to the channel. TikTok um, and all these things and just using, it was almost exclusively their content for the longest time. And I think that's where they're going to continue to go. Jonathan himself came out as non-binary, I think, or I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. But he wrote a book on having imaginary friends and stuff like that. In the end, Jonathan can do what he wants with his identity and do all this stuff, but it's not his responsibility nor his right. I don't care what anybody says. His right to exploit his child the way he's doing it now. I have not seen this video, but um, I'm sure it's going to be real great. So let's do it together. Hello, everybody. This isn't a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, yes it is. Correction. This is a huge mistake and I've just started it. So it's also a mistake. Those tattoos on your left arm. I said it on my Insta stories, you know, that we were thinking about. Um, what are you doing? I'm trying to get a little bag together for... I have guests over. She likes to um, create an environment, you know. She does a turn down service. I don't know. <laughs> well, you did. No, that's not funny. Look, look what she's got. If you come and stay in our house, and I'll give you coconut apes, yeah, right? It's coconut apes? They're vegan. Oh, no. Vegan, that's why. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you, you're probably wondering what this video is about, based on the yeah. title. No. <laughs> What's the video about? Gender reveal. Do-over. Transgender daughter. Gotta throw that word in there. That's a big deal. <laughs> based on the title of this video. So, um, before we get started, and um, I just want to... What is on the back of your shirt? Let's just play this. Play the clip. Wow! Oh, chill with your audio. Your audio spalls. You know what pisses me off a lot about these guys? These people make millions of dollars on YouTube, and they all have the worst audio. Either it's so loud, intensely too loud, or it's garbage, and they're in a, in a, in a cathedral, you know, talking in a toilet or something in this echo. These and it and then they or they'll move a piece of paper and it's like. <laughs> Because I have to have the speakers on really loud so that the speak so that it comes from a mic. So I know when you when you see me react to sound, it's because it's ten times louder in here than what you're hearing. <laughs> you missed us, didn't you? No, we did. Nobody did. I got 120 messages about this video while I was on vacation. No, no, and he knows he's he knows that people don't miss him. He knows that he's doing this provocatively. This makes him a lot of money. It's provocative what he's doing, okay? But it's exploitative of his, I guess, daughter. <laughs> yeah, you guys. In 2014, my wife and I found out we were pregnant with our second child. After a scan, it was concluded the baby was a boy. We had a gender reveal party and announced our son. It didn't take long for Eduardo to express his draw to his sister's clothing. 
So he's saying it didn't take long for Eduardo to draw to his sister's clothes. My son wears his sister's like costumes all the time. This is a really tough topic for me specifically because I come from a church background, right? Where I stand on this issue overall and after reading and reading books like uh, Abigail Schreier's book and um, all that and, and reading other articles for and against trans issues, where I've landed is like I usually do in most things is right in the middle. Okay. So if my kid were to come tell me that they were trans, I would be supportive of my child. I would use their preferred pronouns at that t- time, but I would not take steps towards surgery or puberty blockers or any of those types of things. I am in the camp with, and this is going to be very, very, this is like, it's almost dangerous for me to say this. I am in the wait and see camp. Okay. The wait and see camp. If you haven't read Abigail Schreier's book here, I I suggest you go read it. Um, There have been creators that were, that were aligned with me until I said, I read this book and they were no longer aligned with me. And I asked them to read the book. I said, will you tell me, I want you to read the book and I want you to tell me what's transphobic about this. Cause everybody, if you, if you are not 120,000% with the trans movement, you are a transphobe and you are labeled such, you are a Nazi, everything else. You're the worst person in the world. But as a dad, as a parent, as a person who wants to see his kids thrive again, if you, you can, you can have a balanced view on this, like it or not, the trans issue is here. You know, kids are trans and Also, like it or not, it is being pushed on lots and lots of kids, which I'm going to make the argument that it's being pushed on Eduardo because obviously Jonathan Jolie struggled with this entire life. He wrote a book on struggling with in his his entire life. If you don't think he pushed that on Eduardo once he saw these little things happening, you're wrong. He did. And I think it's wrong for parents to push this on their children. And if a child honestly comes forward with these issues and you can, you can be supportive of your kids, but you can also take the approach, what I'm telling you, I would take, which would to lovingly guide your kids to show them love and respect to guide them, but to, uh, but to use the wait and watch approach. Now, again, saying that is going to be very divisive for a lot of people. They would consider me a transphobe for saying that, but that is my stance. Currently, I'm not saying I'm right. And I'm still researching all sides of this thing, but I think it's a safe place to be so that your kids feel protected, secure, um, loved and heard. Okay. So if your kid comes to you and says, I'm this and that you can say, Hey, let's, let's talk about it. Um, and if they say, I want you to use these pronouns, all okay. Okay. And if they, and then if it starts escalating to like, surgeries, puberty blockers, and things are going to affect their body, then we take the wait and see approach. And again, even saying that in Canada could be considered hate speech. I'm not even kidding you, but that's kind of the approach I'm taking as a parent in this. I mean, my, I don't, my kids don't struggle with trans identity issues. They are, they present how they were born male and female. Just, it's not something we pushed on them. It's just something naturally that a that happened in our home. Now I do believe that parents absolutely push this on their kids specifically in this day and age. I mean, we've got people exploiting their children for, for lots of things. Okay. This is just another one. And so you you have to kind of dig through it all to find the truth. But I think the truth in this video, I think with Jonathan and Eduardo is that Jonathan is pushing this on Eduardo and using it obviously to his advantage and making a lot of money. I think it's wrong for parents to push this on their children. That's my stance. You look at me five years ago, I would have been completely a hundred percent against this. And then exiting the church and deconstructing my faith has given me a new outlook on a lot of these issues. So it's where I stand if you're wondering. Let's continue. Boys, but we thought it was cute. And distracted by our own lives, we paid no attention. As the years went by, Eduardo felt the social pressure to become a boy. So he started to get quiet and less interested in this world. We continued to buy. He just said Eduardo presented as a boy and became less interested in the world. That's what he said. In boys' clothes, yet at home, he only wore his sisters. And whenever he left the house or went to school, he assimilated back into being a boy. And then we had a pandemic, and we were all told to stay at home. And Eduardo asked me, does this mean I get to be a girl all the time now? And that's when I realized the mistake we made. Today, we were undoing that mistake with Eduardo. He's saying it's a mistake that his kid was presenting as he was presenting and, and felt scared to go to school and do all those things. Again, I have no real comment on that because I do think that kids go through that. Now, as a kid who grew up in the 80s and 90s, it just wasn't a thing when I was a kid, 
Okay. I think we're seeing something happen here. And I do think that it comes down to education. And if you go to like, if you look at some teachers and this Florida bill that's going through, I I do feel like this is being pushed on kids way more than it ever was. Now, either that's an acceptance of it and a, you know, a saying like, you know, we were, we were pushed as kids to not come out and not talk about those types of things when you're young, which you could say is true. Cause there's a lot of kids grew up, who grew up in the LGBT community who were quiet their whole life, especially in the church could say that, is it really possible that the trans issue has, I think that, I think the numbers are, I think 40% of adolescents right now, then they have a, a different gender identity than the one they're born with. That is a huge number. A lot of that has to come down to education too. A lot of that has to come down to acceptance. A lot of it has to come down to the culture we live in and th- what they're teaching them at, at school, good or bad. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm for or against it. I'm just saying there, this is a huge shift in the way that we've seen this happen. But I think that Jonathan, I truly believe this. Jonathan pushed that on Eduardo. Like, I, I feel like as family vloggers who are exploitative in every level anyway, since birth, we're, you know, we're looking for different ways to, cause again, I talk about this all the time. These people run out of content and what are you going to talk about? So as soon as Eduardo started doing that and he, and he started becoming more acceptable in the past five years or so, um, that's when he started talking about it more and more and more and more. And then he started seeing his vote, his counts go up, his, his view counts go up, go up. He's like, okay, this is making me money. Whenever someone hits on a topic, like a family vlogger hits on a certain style or topic, they will stick to that until the end of time. Okay, they will they will milk that thing, and I think that's what Jonathan's doing here. Gender reveal. You ready? Yeah. All right, count it down. Three, two, one. <laughs> this is, I think, what a lot of people are upset about is this whole thing where they're doing that together. Where's the rest of the family? If this is such a big celebration, what's going on? Is Anna on board with this? What is happening? Where's everybody? If this is such a big ass celebration, I don't see the rest of the family celebrating and enjoying this. I don't know what is going on here. And I feel like, again, this is a clickbait thing. Obviously he wants people to come see, we corrected a gender reveal mistake, but why don't you just say, Hey guys, if you're truly about this life, Jonathan, why don't you tell, why don't you convince parents to stop doing gender reveals? I, I want them to stop doing it anyway, because those things are shit and they're super dumb these this whole thing it became it became about clickbait it came about that's part of the video so these this is how the family vlogger operates okay they start out generally the pregnancy is the big big money maker it brings in tons of viewers tons of subscribers lots of money the kid's born okay I mean, well before the kid is born then it's like hey we're gonna go do all the checkups look at my belly growing blah 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 and now we're gonna do the gender reveal video just gets a ton of hits generally huge and then obviously you know the baby crests the vag in the video and that's the biggest big video. And the, the more provocative they are with the birth story, the more views they get. Like people are having births in a bathtub in their living room or the bed of a truck with, you know, or out in the forest or, you know, on an airplane. The more provocative the birth story, the video, big bucks. And the more natural you have it, the more like crunchy granola you do it, the more like the more clout you get. It's such a weird world that we live in for this. But to go back to this, it's these kids have been exploited and I think Jonathan had nothing left. Their content is trash. I'm a girl. Did that look genuine to you? I don't know if Eduardo has been coerced into this. I want to believe that the parents wouldn't do that to them, but I've seen too many family vloggers coerce their children into doing crazy things and film every aspect of their life. I just don't think that this one is genuine. I think Jonathan was a big part of Eduardo's transformation. Because Jonathan lived in the closet, so, so, so to speak, his entire life about his idea. His wife didn't even know about it. He kept it qu- quiet from everybody. And so if a parent's going through that and they got a child going through that, then that's that's a bonding, huge bonding thing. And, uh, and there we have it, guys. Um, Eduardo would like to be referred to as she, her. So like in 2014. Eduardo was what, eight? How do you talk to your kid about this? Like... This is the issue that I'm having. Like, how does a kid know is it, it's gotta be the education system, right? It's teachers who are saying, yeah, I'm this now you see it. You see it on all the time. TikTok. There's so many teachers on TikTok who talk about how they teach their kids about this stuff. And it's like, that's not your job. I am sorry where you guys, I don't know where you all stand on this, but it is not a teacher's job to talk to kids about identity issues. Okay. Unless it's a course that they're taking. It's not a teacher's job to tell their kids what their sexual identity is. If you actually think about that for a second, that's really weird. 
It's really weird that teachers are having conversations with literal children from the ages of like four to like 10 and that age and talking about sexual identity. We, I didn't know anything about my teachers growing up. If I saw them at like Zeller's, I'd be like, oh my God, it's like they were famous. I'm like, I'll have your autograph. You never see them outside school. You know nothing about them. And I'm not saying that's the way it's always, the way it always has to be, but why are our teachers talking to our kids about identity and sexual identity issues? So that's one big question I have. And I'm, these are genuine questions. I'm not berating them. I'm just wondering, when did this change? And is it for the, is it for the better? I'm going off on a lot of tangents on this because it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a topic that I struggle with and I've been struggling with for years because again, I'm coming from a fundamentalist Christian background, changing my views on certain things for sure. Especially on trans issues. Like I'm not, if an adult wants to do all this stuff, I'm like all for it because I don't think church has anything to say about that because the amount of people that will change their appearance anyway. And we've talked about that before, boob jobs, fake eyelashes, the tons of makeup that these women wear at churches and the men who are like, you know, men don't really go through so much surgery, but there are men who do do it. Um, but the church is really full of people that are against this, but are also full of people who do transformations to their own bodies. So I'm, I'm specifically talking about trans issues in children, not adults who are consenting. That is a distinction that needs to be made. When Eduardo was born and he came out and he weeded my face and we saw a penis, we imagined a whole life for him, right? And we named him Eduardo after your father. And, you know, when you and your mom found out his name and you were so emotional, we, we felt like, you know what I mean? We kind of like planned this life for this little boy that we had. Yeah, some parts of it are like emotional, mm. but at the same time, it's not, it's not a surprise. The biggest thing I know. I don't think Anna's on board for this whole thing. Reading her vibes on this whole thing, the way she talks about it, I don't see her being on board for this. Something is off about this relationship. And we know that family vloggers often stay together because that's where their money is made. And again, would you stay together with somebody if you're making millions of dollars? If your whole world was wrapped up in how much money you made and your whole world was about staying together and looking like you were married, what would you do? A lot of these people have relationships that are business relationships and they're not in actual marriages anymore. They come together to vlog like they are in one. And I, I, I want to believe, I honestly believe that this is one of them. This, okay, is two years ago when he started wearing Emilia's clothes, mm -hmm. right? The girl's clothes. So he said he's been wearing since they were born, but he said two years ago. So what is it, Jonathan? Was it two years ago or is it when he was born? The personality change in Eduardo. It was like... Is he trying to convince her or what? I feel like it was always there though. But it was, it was getting more, yeah. yeah. I think it was two years ago. I think it was always there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was there. No, 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 no. Again, this is why I think this is a coercion thing. I honestly believe, again, when you go back to the wait and watch, I think I think it's called wait and watch um, theory, is that you just wait and watch. You don't pressure your kids to do those things, right? You just let it be as it is without coercing them more towards it. And I think that Jonathan pushed Eduardo way towards that because he was struggling with his own identity issues until he came out like, what, a year ago? It was getting more and more. And what I was, was going to say is that when I was editing a video, I was going back to our, like, I was 2016, I think I was looking through clips. And I remember saying to myself, I was like, oh, I need a clip for him because the narration he says is wearing me this clothes. And I was like, I wonder, because I know we hide a lot of stuff. And I, I don't, I, I can't, I understand anything this guy just said. Nothing. I have no idea what he just said there. It was like literally every single video, he's literally wearing girls' clothes. You know? What year? Every, everything. Oh, really? There, okay. Sorry, these guys are going back and forth to like two years ago, all the time. We don't, like, they're confused. So that's what's making me think that this isn't as genuine as they think. It's not such a natural thing. It's the whole time or it's not the whole time It's two years ago or it's this whole time Make your mind up before you do this video Because you're, I'm poking holes in it with ease This is so funny Where something is so in your face We went to wait for YouTube Because I needed to figure out who I was And I established I'm a non-binary person And that took me a long time to kind of Get to understand that Last year In case you don't follow me on Instagram TikTok Here's a video of me explaining my gender Year, I went on an adventure to find out who I was. There was a huge piece of my life missing. And up until that moment I realized it, I had no clue who I was. You see, all the emotional trauma of my childhood kept me from expressing my true self. That was until my child told me who she was. So he's telling everybody that Eduardo is the one that told him who he was. That's not... 
that's I'm sorry. No. I don't believe that for one second. She said, not a boy, dad. I'm a girl. Sometimes we hide ourselves away, even from ourselves. That was a huge t-shirt. It's too big for you, dude. And then while we were buried safely beneath, we never checked to see if it's safe outside. Eduardo showed me that it was safe and that I should come out. So I spent a year revisiting my childhood. And <laughs> here's the plug for the book. It's not very emotional trauma that was high me as a way in a connection that allowed me to almost trans what is that domdi port myself back in time i am partly male and partly female but also i'm neither male nor female man there's so many things i want to say right now about that phrase because in the way that we work as human beings that's what i struggle with the most i'm no i'm no longer male nor female but i am male and i'm female i mean i just if you told your child that who, who like what are they gonna say and I feel like he did t tell his child. I feel like he is the one that pushed that on it. The, the, ish, the trans issue is a big, big deal these days. Okay. And it's, it's, I'm scared to talk about it. I honestly am scared to talk about it because in one point I'm like, Hey, you, you, you're a consenting adult. You do what you want. You want me to call you Z and they and them and, and all that stuff. You know what? If it makes you happy, it doesn't hurt me. You hear this phrase a lot. I don't want to fall into your, you know, th these are lies. So I don't want to have to repeat these. I don't want to be forced to repeat these lies, quote unquote. But I'm at the point where I'm like, when it comes to this type of issue, it makes you happy. I'm whatever. Who am I? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't affect me. So at the same time, and I think it, there's a, there's a, there is a por portion of being a human and decent to other humans that if these people are absolutely going through these issues. I mean, it doesn't hurt me. So of course. But where, where it starts to bug me is when kids are pushed and coerced into this. And kids are easily pushed and coerced into anything. Okay? I'm going to keep pushing Abigail Shire's book. I need you to, if, if you have not read it and you think it's homophobic because you watched some video on it, I need you to go read these things yourself. I am absolutely all for, as well, reading other books that are on the other side of the issue. But Abigail Schreier doesn't, doesn't come at it from a, home, from a transphobic stance. She's literally talking and, re, and, and interviewing real people about their issues in this world. And she, has, and she thinks, Abigail Schreier thinks that it's a big problem because a lot of teenagers are going through a, they're going through a gender identity issue and a lot of them are getting double mastectomies. A lot of them are getting surgeries. A lot of them are doing puberty blockers. A lot of them are becoming infertile. Some of them are getting, and I'm not saying like eight year olds are, but I'm saying teenagers are. And as a person who believes in informed consent, I don't think any of these kids can give informed consent to what they're doing. We don't, we don't allow our young kids to make their own bedtimes, to tell you what they want to eat. Are they be eating ice cream every single day? They'd be going to bed at two o'clock in the morning, waking up miserable. Okay. There are decisions we make for our children that are for their benefit. A couple that shouldn't be there are exploiting them online, which is what I talk about a lot here. And this, this is a big, big one, right? Again, that's why I do the, the wait and watch because you're waiting to see. And if it, if it goes farther and farther and farther, then that's when you kind of take different steps. But if some parents, and I know this because I've seen it, some parents are seeing that or not, and I, there's proof of it online, or they're forcing it on their children. They are pushing this onto their children and you shouldn't do that. It's wrong to push your kid into these types of issues because they're too, too young. Okay. But it's also wrong to like, to push and hide your child from this if it is indeed real. Okay. So that's where I kind of sit. I know I'm, I know it's so confusing and I'm still trying to learn from it. You make decisions for your children. Your children should not be making these types of decisions for themselves. If a parent goes along with that, then I think that there's a problem with that. And again, that's almost considered hate speech where I live in Canada. Say what you want. Call me whatever you want. But in the end, these are my children. I get to parent my children. And my, my stance will be with my children is to communicate with them what genders are, how it's kind of evolving in the world and having honest conversations that are age appropriate for them. And if one day they come home and they say, mom, dad, I'm... I'm non-binary or this and that. I'll be like, hey, you know what? Let's discuss it. I'm not going to hate my children or love them less. I'm going to be the same damn parent to my kids regardless of who they are or who they think they are or who they want to be. And I'm going to support them all the way. But I'm also not going to push things like surgeries and puberty blockers and things on them until they're way old enough to make that decision for themselves. And I'm talking like 18 years old. Okay, when you're an adult, you go make all the decisions you want and I'll back you up. 
But now you're seeing parents who are being not being told about it. They're 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 given puberty blockers without telling the parents. These are medical decisions that parents are supposed to be able to make for their kids. I know I'm ranting about this. Let's keep going. I don't want to wear girls' clothes, and I don't want to wear boys' clothes. So I dress androgynous. So he dresses androgynous. I don't. That's girl clothes you're wearing. Girl clothes. So if you have also been hiding like I was, I just want to let you know. It's safe. I want to let you guys know that regardless, if this guy wasn't on the internet exploiting his children for their entire lives for millions and millions of dollars, I might actually believe him. Okay. If I didn't know that these people faked their entire lives for money online, I might actually believe him. Right. If they didn't have a freaking Ferrari and Range Rovers and million dollar house and everything else, I might actually believe him. But because he exploits his children, nothing this guy says, I will believe. Because I can't see that without the lens. I can't see his story without the lens of exploitation of children and that he'll do. And I feel like he'll do anything to make money. So he, he, he cannot, basically what I'm saying is these types of people cannot be trusted with this type of topic because we see right through it. We should just not be afraid to show our truth about we are a progressive, diverse family. You know, we were even saying with Anna, you, you have a gay sister, a trans cousin, a gay cousin. Who cares? A non-binary husband, a transgender child. You know, you... Look at her face. Something tells me, too, that Anna doesn't agree to the extent that Jonathan's putting their daughter out there. Something tells me that she even thinks that the lines are being crossed. And then if Eduardo wants to not be this as she gets older, what's going to happen? Is she going to feel now that she has to do this because her dad has done it? Right. This is a big deal. There's a lot of nuance to this story. And some people think that, that, you know, I generally talk in black and white. Most things I'm black and white. Like if you exploit your kids, there's no good about it. There's no nuance to the exploitation of kids, right? If you make money from your kids online, if they, if you put them out there, tell the world about their lives, give her the way their privacy and everything that is exploitation. That's black and white to me. There's no nuance. Okay. But there's nuance to this style of story. Because I can see it in the vibe, in the way that she's looking. She's not on board for this. You are, you are a melting pot. You know what I mean? And that's, she's not a melting pot. That's the world we live in today. And it's like, let's, let's show that world. And let's not be afraid of it. Yes, I agree with you, Jonathan. You can show that world because you live in it. You say you're non-binary. Cool. Come out, tell us. We'll read your book. We won't. But you have a book. <laughs> Some people will read it. But it's not your job, nor your privilege, nor your right. And I know that sounds bad because he is the parent. It's not your story to tell. That is Eduardo's story. And as a child, regardless of what you guys believe about trends issues with children, it shouldn't be put online for everybody to see. Absolutely not. There is now pressure on Eduardo that is because it's out there for the public that if later down the road, she decides he doesn't want to be a she anymore and he wants to go back to being a he. Okay. That's going to be some major pressure on Eduardo. The fact that this is out there and that everybody knows so much about this and it's everybody's so up in arms is really scary because that is tons of pressure to put on her. Tons. And there's unneeded. This is nobody's story to tell. What if Eduardo doesn't want her story told to the world when, when she turns 18 years old, 20, 21? What if she looks back and says, I cannot believe my parents put this online. What are you going to do? You can't take this back, Jonathan and Anna. You guys cannot take this back. This is what's so scary about this, this topic because it's so divisive. It's very, it's not, it's not, it's not an accepted realm here because even me sitting in the middle saying what I'm saying, people will literally call me a transphobe. They will call me literally Hitler for being this way, for having, for, for, for being a parent who is a wait and watch parent. Okay. They'll say, no, 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 you should be in jail. Your kids should be taken away. I kid you not problem here is that it's because it's so divisive you should have just kept this private it is not your story to put out into the public that's the big issue i think a lot of people it's not the trans issue it's not that eduardo now is a girl it's not that jonathan is now non-binary it's that you're putting a story out that doesn't belong to you i was talking to my family today on the group chat mm -hmm. are you in that group one I I think I, you're not in the family group chat okay i thought i did the everyone group one 
And, and I was explaining to him that Eduardo shall go forward being is she her, but... No, I'm not on that. Oh, and I said... Why is she not in that chat? But it's understandable if you make mistakes and don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Don't be don't be stressed out. We... Nah, you don't get to say that. Not in this day and age. I'm stressed out doing this video. This is the this is the world we've created that you can't ask questions. You're not even allowed to ask the question anymore. You're not even allowed to again my stance that I've taken as a parent because my wife and I have talked about this um, of, of gently of loving and accepting our child no matter what, but not allowing them to make crazy decisions like surgeries, puberty blockers, and the medical area off with his head. That's what they'll say, and that is crazy that a parent like me who loves my child unconditionally no matter what. Okay, no matter what. Even if they murder somebody, yeah, I hope they go to jail for the rest of their life and everything else. They're still my child. I still love them. Okay. And I love my kids fiercely. Okay. Fiercely. And have I, have I, have I thought about this because our kids are being taught this in many ways? Of course I have. My wife and I have had a communication about how we're going to talk to our kids if this does come up. Okay. We have a plan in place. But the plan is never, ever, ever, ever going to be to love our kids less. I promise you that. And that should be every parent's stance on this. And unfortunately, we're in a place where that isn't. Specifically when it comes to Christian parents. And so that's why it's nuanced and it's divided. Because with kids, everything is different. Are hardwired that Eduardo is our boy. And sometimes we even say she, but then we'll accidentally throw in a he. When you're trying to tell Andrea. Yeah, no. You're like, well, she's over there. Andrea's like, look, and he was just like... <laughs> Well, you know, man, that oh, yeah, your other kids are confused. Surprise, surprise. Again, there's a whole other topic right here. The other kids, the other kids are affected by this as well. They can't understand this. They're so small. And you've basically turned Eduardo into the, the circus, the zoo. Eduardo is, is a, is a animal in your zoo. And Eduardo has now been singled out completely from all the other kids. Eduardo was the star now. The other kids are just passing elements in the, in the story now. And Eduardo became the star. And that is, that is a problem. Okay, they're even saying their kids are confused. These people aren't believing anything that's coming out of their mouth. This is, I honestly believe, this is the biggest farce. I honestly believe that most of this is coerced. That's not a <laughs> yeah. I mean, Eduardo isn't offended by his family members. Mm saying like even said his right now exactly like, because it's hard because you don't exactly because you don't believe it your damn self if this is something that's been happening for so long and you still can't get it right i just think in your house you don't do it i think this is i honestly believe and it's so scary to say this that this is for the internet this is for youtube clout and i think every i think there's so many people who are who are right there with me on that right well, no, when it's mind. to do with um you know outside of the home then she wants to be referred to. And mm. I, I'm not saying that like clear cut, like, oh, at home it's this, uh, it's no, not no, like no. that. It's just that if- She is more forgiving if of us family, family, than Yeah, if it were- Oh my God, you guys couldn't be more confusing if you tried. Either Eduardo was a she from the birth, but now it's two years ago, 2016, it's 2018, it's 2019. You have, you guys can't say, you, you're literally, you make this so bad. Because I can poke holes in everything you just said. Every video I've ever done about these, this couple, they have never made a cohesive statement together once. She'll say something, he'll correct it, or he'll say something and she'll correct it. And they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, that's what we all meant. That's who these people are. His family says it, and even of anybody, mm -hmm. like if it's done is it, with- She is a really without, nice person. Yeah, there's no like in, ill intent. Mm -hmm. Eduardo completely gets that. I think it's more where if she's ever feeling excluded from something, that's where it, or if it's used in that way, mm. that's where what? it affects her in a negative way. But you know, we're all, you know, it's only recently. I don't know what you said. No, we are all dumber now for hearing that. It has Eduardo said that she wants to be that. So mm -hmm. now, but it's all led, like, I don't know if Eduardo will always be Eduardo, mm -hmm. but that's something we're going forward. Like I, as a non-binary person, I'm going by he, him, because it oh, makes sense. Thank God. I was it's so confusing. It's to me because I have 42 years of he, him. I'm not saying I'll always be he, him. Maybe you follow me on Instagram, you know about it. Giselle and my boy. I don't feel like anyone else can talk. I I'm watching Anna's face here. Shh. You guys have to see this. I think, I honestly believe in the end, after all this, the only person that's going to really suffer, actually the two... 
there's going to be two main victims in this whole story. It's going to be Anna and the life that she's had to lead and lie for. And it's going to be Eduardo for the coercion and the, the, the instigation, the putting on like the pushing of this ideology onto, because it's, un- it's inarguable now that he is non-binary and has been living that for his life. If you don't think there was some kind of coercion because he was struggling with that and he wanted his daughter to be there with him, then again, it just, it's a, it's a, it's a question that we are allowed to ask. And I think when it comes to kids, it should be asked to the female part of me therefore that's why i don't mind by pronoun being he him if you haven't had any experience with this it's all very confusing lots of yeah it's all very confusing and you're confused it is confusing and it's confusing to the entire world because we had this accepted view of how we dealt with each other and how we talked about one another and how we communicated with one another that has completely changed and it is really confusing to everybody and so but even if you say that you are confused about it, that is considered hate. I kid you not. People are probably say this too, like, oh, but isn't Eduardo way too young to know? But this is years and years of conversations. You just said it was 2016 or it was two years ago. Is it years and years of conversations? And how does that conversation go with a kid who cannot make informed decisions and choices? This is the problem with this conversation. How did that conversation go? and many events that have all led up to this so it's what it was never a quick decision and it never will be um this is just something that means it's something that basically signifies our child's happiness surely it's better that if i was happy in the now Mm -hmm. rather than you know maybe being uncomfortable right now and then being happy in a few years to come. It doesn't really work like that. Because my concern was here and now, what? if he suppresses him, herself today and then becomes a teenager and young adult and then lashes out or goes into a community that that's not mislabeling her. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened to me in most of my life that I was mislabeled and I ended up in really bad situations. No, you didn't know. You said you didn't know. You weren't mislabeled because those people didn't know. You can't say you're mislabeled if nobody knew. No one allowed me to understand myself. Life is short and just enjoy it and just be yourself. But I'm just saying, we understand as parents that it is, you, you never know where your kids are going to be. And I understand that we plan the future. We imagine the future what? for Eduardo and that future has now changed and we have to. No, you imagine the future for Eduardo and it's going exactly how you thought. Exactly how you wanted it to. Again, it, it cannot. We can ask the question. We, we have to be able to be there. That a parent who struggles with the, the same identity issues is likely going to project that. That's the word I'm looking for. Project. Project that onto a child. Absolutely. There's some projection going on. Listen and accept and kind of go. Okay, and you're canceled. <laughs> oh well. Oh, it was a short return. You're not going to be canceled. They're on the right side of like the world right now as far as this is concerned right they and he knows that he knows he gets clicks and everything else from this but what he's on the wrong side is the exploitation of eduardo that cannot be ignored here again and i'll come back to this regardless what you think about this trans issue okay eduardo's story is eduardo's story and nobody else is to tell eduardo does not give informed consent for her story to be on the internet right now does not know the ramifications of the future of what happens. Again, what if Eduardo grows out of this or has a change of heart or change of mind or whatever the case may be, change of gender as they're older? Because I've seen it happen. I've seen, you can go on TikTok right now and find people that are like, I'm not a girl, I'm not a boy. What if Eduardo decides one day that she's not a boy, she's not a girl, she's not this, she's not that. You've you've locked her into this. And all this leading up to the point of the kid, that's going to be on the internet forever. Again, It might be the case that Eduardo is really happier now and is who she wants to be. It could be the case. But you don't know that and you can't know that. And Eduardo cannot give informed consent for her story to put out like you've put it out there. (laughs) Goodbye. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to try and make better effort. And, you know, it's going to. I like how they're off for like a year and they come back with the shittiest video we've ever seen in our life. This was garbage. It'll be different this time around because 
there's two other main characters in this house that I feel like have a voice now, and we're gonna kind of allow what? them. What? Bianca and Theo. <laughs> we're gonna allow them to take a little front seat. Uh, lead a bit in some of the videos which we never used to do before. What? Who's that? But I feel like Amina and Eduardo, they have a voice now and... Oh, so... He just said that Eduardo now is one of the main characters on going forward. So he's going to be putting out way more about this. Again, Jonathan, why don't you just talk about your issues? Maybe you'll inspire other people to who've struggled the same thing to feel accepted and all this stuff. That's f- great. Go for it. I mean, you're an adult. You're consenting to that. Eduardo can't consent. Amelia definitely has a voice now and a very opinion and she wants to redo her room with the team Buddy Edgy. So is um, is Eduardo now Amelia? I com- I'm confused about what's going on now. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with. Buddy Edgy. <laughs> oh, so it's the oldest daughter. <laughs> Didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Anna's not, Anna is not on board for this. I'm sorry, guys. I don't care what you think. I can see the edge. I can see the energy, of <laughs> the vibes. She is not down for this. It's Anna with the X. And maybe because of pressure from family. Bye. So a hard, hard, hard topic to cover. Because in this day and age, again, if you're not completely for all of that, then you are considered a transphobe. And I'm not necessarily scared of that because I know... And I'm confident in my parenting and what I'm going to do. And we've had conversations about what we're going to do if this ever happens, if this ever comes up in our family, we are prepared. I do think some parents aren't prepared. And I think if you're a parent, you should get prepared. You should have a plan for what you're going to do. Because again, the numbers of children and adolescents coming out as different genders is exploding. It's enormous and it has changed. The world has changed. And as a loving parent, always accept your kids. No matter what, but always make sure you have their best interest in mind, especially when it comes to the development of their bodies and everything else. Do not let adolescents get surgeries and do puberty blockers. I don't care what you guys say about that to me. I don't care. Wait till they're old enough to make that decision on their own. Check the maturity level. Obviously, you have to go to doctors to and psychologists to do all that stuff anyway, but it's a really, really tough topic. And um, the wait and see approach is really, really, I think a good balanced way to do this because you respect your children. You love them. You accept them. But at the same time, you're not going to allow them to do something to their body that is irreversible, right? That they could eventually on the other side, change their mind later because how many kids have changed? How many teenagers have made a decision and changed their mind later? So again, you, I I am in the camp of waiting until they're adults to make those decisions for themselves but always loving and always accepting them no matter what. In the end, if you accept and love your children and you and you wait, if they see the love and the acceptance, they also will respect the idea that you are going to, hey, I'm, we're going to wait this one out. We're going to wait till you're old enough, till you've gone through puberty, so everything has gone through and you're developed your mind and your brain, then you make the decision and I will be there with you 112%. I will always support you. I will always be there and I will always accept you for who you are, no matter who that person really is. But it is my job as your parent to protect you until you can make an informed decision for yourself. And again, my whole channel comes back to that one damn statement. Kids cannot give informed consent. So what Jonathan is doing here is putting Eduardo's story out there without her informed consent. That's the root of this whole thing. So no matter what you believe on the issue, We can all agree that this is not Jonathan's story to tell. And I think that Eduardo will regret this when she's older. I really, really do believe that. Because what if Eduardo, when she gets older, didn't want this story out there? Some people like to be private too, right? When kids get older, I'm noticing that my daughter likes to be a little bit more autonomous. She likes a little bit more alone time now, hang with her friends and chat and stuff. She likes her alone time. She's becoming less dependent on us, which breaks my effing heart. Okay, she's my little girl. Um, But as she gets older, the independence starts happening. What if Eduardo wants to be way more independent later, wants to be more quiet, doesn't want to have her story told? You cannot turn this bus around. And that's what's so scary about this type of topic. So I hope I did it justice. I know I'm going to be hated on. I might lose some subscribers for that. But that's an honest, that's, that's as honest as I can be about this whole situation. But we can all agree it's not Jonathan's story to tell. And that is disgusting what he's doing. 
And he pushed his book, which is, don't read it. <laughs> Everybody take a deep breath. You need that one today. As parents, we are responsible for our kids. We are responsible to do the most amazing and hardest things to do is to love your kids through everything unconditionally. Okay? And that can be a really hard decision to make. But love and protect your kids and accept them for who they are at all times. But acceptance does not necessarily mean that you have to capitulate to everything society is pushing on your kids or you. Right? You know what's best for your kids. Unless it's exploiting them online, then you don't know. <laughs> but you are beautiful, gorgeous, and super damn valuable. Don't you ever forget it. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.